The Los Angeles Lakers are on a great run right now. They've won five out of their last six games. Yes, they lost to Chicago in their first matchup, but they came back from down double digits in their second one to come back and beat them. And it's looking more and more possible that they could get out of the play-in, and not in a bad way, in a good way, making it to the sixth seed. Now, if the Lakers were able to do that, that would be huge for them because they would be matched up with the Sacramento Kings, who are looking like the team that everybody in the West wants to match up against because they are probably the weakest team in the top half of that Western Conference playoffs bracket. And that's just because outside of Harrison Barnes, they don't have a ton of playoff experience. Sabonis has been to the playoffs a good amount of times with the Pacers, but Harrison Barnes is the only player on that team, really, that's had some championship experience. I believe he is the only one on that team. I may be mistaken. There might be someone that was on the end of the bench. I don't know if Trey Lyles has had some deep runs in the playoffs or something, but obviously probably not with the Pistons. So, yeah, my point is that if the Lakers get that sixth seed, that is such a win for them because they will avoid the play-in, first of all, which would eliminate the possibility of them just falling out of the playoffs in potentially one game, depending on if they fall to the nine seed or if they lose two games in a row as the seventh, eighth seed, whatever. So right now, like I said, they've won five out of their last six. They've been looking great and I expect them to keep it up. They're playing tonight versus the Houston Rockets, who they had a pretty bad loss to um, probably about 15 games ago. And they, I'm sure, will be playing their absolute hardest to not let that happen again because that was a really embarrassing loss for them with the Houston Rockets being one of the worst teams in the league. But you can't count them out because Kevin Porter Jr. made a statement saying that it's the Lakers. They're going to play their absolute hardest to beat them because it's the Lakers. The Rockets want to get that W, even though really more losses means better lottery projections for them, which is way more important than just beating the Lakers on a random Saturday night. So we'll have to see what happens there, but the Lakers are really going to have a chance to slide into that sixth spot. So definitely keep an eye out for them Lakers because they're making moves, which is great to see because this team started off the season really, really bad. They were two and 10 and just didn't look like a good team at all. No team has ever started the season that awful and made the playoffs. And it's looking more and more promising that the Lakers will end up making it. So right now, they are sitting in that eighth seed spot, half a game behind the Pelicans. They own the tiebreaker over the Pelicans. So if they win tonight against the Houston Rockets, they will move back up to seventh, which is only, I believe, one game out of the sixth spot. So they're going to the Lakers are going to end up playing the Clippers on April 5th. And if they beat the Clippers on that game, they will be in the sixth spot for that, at least that game, that day. Um, It's going to shake up a ton, but they would move up to sixth, which is really good because the Clippers don't play again until April 5th. So if the Lakers win against the Rockets today, they will get up to the seventh spot. They'll move up and tie with the Pelicans, but they have the tiebreaker, like I said. Then they have the Jazz on April 4th, and the Jazz have basically started to call it wraps on the season. Um, they're not, I don't think they're statistically eliminated at this point, but they have basically called it a year and have started to fall out of that play in area. The only team that's really still fighting is that Mavericks team, which obviously they should be around that area. Also, the Thunder, I guess they're in the play in, but they are a team that we probably didn't expect to be fighting still at this point in the season. And then on that back-to-back, the second day of the back-to-back is that Clippers game for the Lakers. So after the Jazz, they play the Clippers. So since that is the second day of a back-to-back, that's going to be a rough game. But the Lakers haven't beat the Clippers in a very long time. So they're probably due for a win at this point. And when I think of how that game is going to go, Paul George, I believe, is not going to play. I'm pretty sure that's like a for sure thing. Paul George won't play. It's going to be the Russell Westbrook revenge game. There's going to be Kawhi Leonard still, um, at least we assume, unless, well, I guess they don't have a game until then. So, yes, they'll have Kawhi Leonard. 
everyone will be fully rested for them because they have a lot of time off. They just played, I believe it was last night, which was April 1st. And they don't play the second, the third, or the fourth, which is a lot of time off. Three days off is something you don't really see. Nobody plays on April 4th. I don't know if there's a reason for that, but I don't believe any, or nobody plays on April 3rd, I believe it is. So I don't really know if there's a reason for that or not, but the Clippers are hungry and they they don't want to fall into that playing tournament that's for sure with the seven eight nine and ten seeds being in the in the playing tournament and the west being so competitive this year it's pretty easy just to slip down to that seventh seed and be in the playing tournament and it's really looking like the only two teams that could fall out of that playing tournament or out of the non-playing tournament playoff teams is the clippers or the warriors and the lakers do have the the tiebreaker over the Warriors so that might be better but the Clippers look like it is more reachable for the Lakers to get now even if the Lakers win this game against the Clippers they won't have the tiebreaker so the only reason this matters is because if the Lakers win this one and the Clippers lose that's a one game swing instead of a half game swing like would normally happen so I'm going to pull up the standings right now and if we look at it the lakers are in the eighth spot like i said they're 39 and 38 the clippers are 41 and 38 meaning they have less games left than the lakers they have the same amount of losses as the lakers as well so if the lakers win against the rockets that'll get them one or well half game behind the clippers if they win against the jazz that'll get them tied with the clippers which would still mean that the Clippers would be ahead of them because the Clippers are going to have the tiebreaker. But if they beat the Clippers, that would then get the Lakers a full game ahead of them, which is a big deal, assuming that the Lakers win their next two games. Now, also, Minnesota is right on the Lakers' tail. They're half a game behind the Lakers. So you do have to watch from teams coming from behind. And then the Pelicans, like I said, they have played one more game than the Lakers right now, so they are half a game up. But the Lakers have the tiebreaker right there, and since since they played one more game, I am not too worried about it right now. Talking about this in our hypothetical stance because we're assuming the Lakers are winning those next three games, or at least the next two, and then hoping they get that last one. Then after that Clippers game, they have the sixth off of April. Then on the seventh, they play the Suns, which is going to be a huge game, a huge game, because. That Suns game is going to feature Kevin Durant, and that is going to be the first time that LeBron and Kevin Durant have played to, against each other since 2018, Christmas of 2018. So a very, very long time ago. It's going to be a huge matchup that a lot of people are going to be tuned in watching. So I expect that to be a very, very competitive game, and that is going to be an Anthony Davis game. We're going to need Anthony Davis in that game. He's going to be guarded by DeAndre Ayton, Kevin Durant and LeBron are going to be going at each other. Um, and where do you put Jared Vanderbilt? Do you put him on Devin Booker or do you put him on Kevin Durant? That'll be an interesting thing to see. I would maybe want to see Austin Reeves on Devin Booker and then Jared Vanderbilt on Kevin Durant. I think that would be the way I would lean. And then probably D'Lo on Chris Paul or LeBron on Chris Paul and whoever their four is, whether it's, I guess it could be... TJ Warren, or if it's Josh Kogi. Anyway, after that Suns matchup, the Lakers play the Jazz for one more time, which the Jazz are probably just going to rest a lot of their guys, and it'll just be what should be an easy win for the Lakers, but they can't really obviously look at it as an easy win because you don't want them just to throw it away like that. So I am expecting the Lakers to hopefully keep this run going. Uh, the Clippers and the Suns game is obviously going to be the most difficult. I think the Suns is probably going to be the most difficult because the Clippers are without Paul George. And also, I just think that the Lakers are going to have that chip on their shoulder to beat the Clippers because they haven't beat them in what feels like a long time. So, really, I am very pleased with this Lakers team. I think that they have a great shot to get to that sixth seed as long as they don't lose more than one game even if they win that or lose that one game to the suns they might still not make that six seed but if they win out from here on out they are guaranteed to minimum make the six seed which 
that's via Trevor Lane, who's the runner of Lakers Nation. So uh, he probably did a lot of math to figure that out. But that is a cool thought. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn notification bells to all. See you guys later in the next video. And peace out, my friends. See you guys next time. Bye.